It is currently 4.22. I'm on my way to San Francisco. It was super hard to get out of bed this morning, like absolutely insane. I think I slept for an hour and a half. But I'm so excited. I got like very light, like personal carry-on bag. I just like literally my tote bag and like my camera bag. I have the most humongous suitcase for checked baggage that like I can fit into it, but on our way. I don't think there's any better feeling in the world than going to the airport. Seriously, I just, I get so excited. I am not a morning person whatsoever, but waking up at 3 a.m. to the airport for an adventure, sign me up. Everything just feels different at the airport. The coffee, the air, and of course the overpriced food. But even the people, I adore people watching, but especially at the airport. And just the potential waiting on the other side of that magical plane. Also, funny story, my checked baggage was so large, but it was so many kilos off of what was allowed, even though I waited at home, like that doesn't make sense. So I did that thing where I unzipped and tried to fit the entire world in my little tote bag. I mean, I was just standing there parting ways with random objects, putting on like five layers of jackets and sweaters and coats, looking like a snowman or Joey from Friends in that one episode, just hardly being able to walk, all to just remove that weight. And it was still a couple kilos off, so I ended up paying an insanity amount of money for it being overweight. To this day, I've learned my lesson and now pack so light that no other airport will ever be able to scam me this way again. So that was really fun to do at like 4am in the morning. But anyways, this isn't a video about the airport, although if I could leave in all of my flying footage, I think there would be at least an hour. But does anyone else feel this way too, especially near the window seat? It just feels like you're at the edge of the world and yet passing through a space and time continuum. A place where calories and time just don't count. This year, it's been quite a journey figuring out what I wanted to do next. Being in your mid-twenties is super weird, but it's also like a blank page because you can literally do anything. So as confused as I was about where I wanted to go, where I wanted to travel or live, I mean, I'm also that person that immediately wants to live any place they travel to. I decided San Francisco was going to be my home for the next month. One month. One whole month in California. My good friend lives there and offered to host me for the month, which I will forever be grateful for. So I really just couldn't say no. But of course, this wasn't going to be a vacation. I was still going to be working. I mean, gotta fit in with the locals somehow. But I'll touch on that concept later. Making decisions is tough when there's no wrong answer. So instead, I chose to wander a little bit longer and really just take my time with things because honestly, there's no rush. So I am in San Francisco. Um, I'm taking a little kind of like workcation um, for a month and so I've been here already for a couple weeks now um, but today's my day off from work and so I decided I'm gonna explore the city a little bit. I realized that it's really hard to explore a city when you're working full-time <laughs> nine to five and so it's, really, it's been really hard. I've been just like staying in the near area, but I'm not feeling the best today either, but I got some nice brunch. Now I'm heading off to Phil's Coffee. <laughs> Mostly because of Emma Chamberlain and how much she used to always go on about Phil's Coffee. So I was like, finally gonna see what all the talk is about. And then I might head on to Dolores Park. Um, I really wanted to go see the Golden Gate Bridge today, but that might be another time because I'm not feeling the best. Um, I have like a really weird um, throat ache and so I might go on the weekend but it's nice to get an extra day off um, and the city is so beautiful. <laughs> I 
As you walk by the streets of San Francisco, you can't help but stop and stare. It's just one of those places that is so unique. You can't walk past any of the houses and just not feel like you're walking down a famous museum of royalty. It's artwork everywhere you look, and you just can't believe that it's free. Well, not free, as the second you breathe, there's a hundred dollars just gone. Don't ask me how. It just happens. But <laughs> you know what I mean? It just feels illegal to walk past beautiful purple and green and pink houses without having to pay. It looks and feels exactly like all those scenes in the movies. It's so crazy to rewatch The Prince of Diaries now because I'm just like, oh my gosh, I was there. So I got the coffee from Phil's Coffee and it actually didn't have any espresso drinks which was a huge shock to me so I ended up getting this like rose um, coffee, iced coffee drink and I don't know why I got it because I'm not actually a big fan of rose like flavors in coffee but it was like okay it was like a very like hipster vibes like place there were like so many people um, and then I walked into a bookshop called Folio Books it was really cute really like small and cozy and I got a book that I really have been wanting to get for the longest time ever. It's called um, The Midnight Library. And it just had such a pretty like book cover. Um, and I've been wanting to like buy it from Amazon for the longest time ever. So I'm so glad that I like found it. I really wanted to find a book to read. And it's already like basically midday. I kind of like finished all of the things that I wanted to like get done anyways, which was just, just like walk around the city, get some brunch, get some coffee work on my laptop for a bit and then I think I'm just gonna make my way to Dolores Park which is apparently like a very popular park here in San Francisco where like everyone goes to um, to just hang out and chill and so I think I'm, I'll just go there catch a bus there and like read a book while I'm there it's pretty chilly today the buses are on a whole different level literally they have specific signs that light up saying hold on because the up and down hills are legit roller coasters it's a nice physical but also emotional reminder though not only are you paying 250 for a bus ride and roller coaster adventure but a little dose of therapy too pretty much the only time you get so much value for your money in california so i accidentally took the wrong bus very on brand for me so i had to take the wrong it's funny how like each street so different like I felt like I just fell into another neighborhood that had some like very weird streets but now I'm back I'm literally um, you know always have to account for getting lost wherever I go so it's very on brand for me to take the wrong bus but I'm just <laughs> living in constant Carina world where I get lost everywhere but that's okay um, and I'm almost at Dolores Park so I got there in the end that's all that matters <laughs> And another thing that you'll never have to pay for ever again, a gym membership. Who needs one if a trip to the grocery store has uphill inclination on natural? You feel out of breath walking like 40 meters uphill. But then of course, you muster up your single greatest act from those grade 9 drama class skills and pretend like you're completely fine when you pass by a local, really trying to hide the fact that you're about to pass out. But things really are expensive, people seem very busy. As I walk down all the local coffee shops, everyone is wearing a ball cap, leggings, two to three jacket layers, their hair up, walking their golden retriever, in line for a coffee while having a one-on-one -on -one with their direct report boss, or a group call with a Bluetooth in their ear. It seems like every other person here works at a popular tech company. I was also a little too excited with the idea of ever running into Elizabeth Holmes. You have to be prepared if you ever ask people, so, where do you work? Because you might most likely get slammed with a nonchalant Google, Facebook, Cisco. It's as casual as them saying, yeah, we have Earl Grey tea, mint, 
chamomile. The work culture is so fascinating to observe. People are either on constant calls or are catching up with a friend on a lazy 11 a.m. morning. There is literally no in between. People are either burnt out, busy, and stressed, or laid back, and you wonder how they can be just so chill and calm. Like, don't they have somewhere to be? I was wandering through Bernal Heights Park one day, and I overheard someone saying, I'd leave my high stress job, but it pays too well. And that's the general vibe. Sunday, so it's actually been a while since I vlogged for this video. I've been here now for three and a half ish weeks, so this is my last week. Um, and then one of those weeks, like one and a half of those weeks, I was basically sick the entire week, so not a lot to do when you're sick. Um, but today is the last Sunday before I leave. I leave on Friday. See, so I already had some breakfast, um, and so I'm looking to go to the Golden Gate Bridge, um, take a picture there for like, I don't know, I, I don't want to stay too long, I just like literally want to go there to take a picture and then like leave. <laughs> um, and then want to go on my way to Fisherman's Wharf, which is like this pier um, that is like a big touristy place in the area. Um, apparently it has like seals or something, just a bunch of like shops and restaurants, so I love to walk around there. And then that's basically the majority of my day probably. <laughs> um, I'll probably eat there, have some coffee. Yeah, I really need some coffee. And then I need to go grocery shopping for the week since it's my last week. I want to get like all, all of the things that I need, but also not too many grocery items so I don't have to like waste them because I'm only here for like four or five more days. I guess it's not as much as it sounded in my head, but in my head I'm like, there's a lot to get done today. I'm gonna just take it slow um, and try to vlog as much as possible. get me started on the San Francisco weather. I had the oddest assumption that it was going to be exactly like Florida, like hot, humid, and sunny. And it is sunny, but it is definitely not hot. It has that cold spring energy basically all the time. After walking around for about a week and basically always shivering and getting sick a couple times, you learn to blend in by wearing layers. Layers and layers and layers. I have to be honest, I don't even wear that many layers in Canada. Maybe that's because I drive everywhere, but even when I was commuting on the daily to downtown, I never wore layers but just my warm winter jacket. Here, if you wear a winter jacket, you'll overheat and people will look at you funny. But if you don't layer up, you'll freeze. So just trust me on this one, you want to be warm in San Francisco. the San Francisco tour bus. We have 10 minutes to just walk around and take pictures. So they say that San Francisco is windy, especially driving at the top of the tour bus. It feels like you're inside um, a hurricane. But it's fun. It's supposed to be like 17 degrees this morning and I was like, yep, it's time for like extra layers, a long a sleeve and a jacket. <laughs>
I was honestly living my best life on the roof of this double-decker tour bus. Literally felt like Joey from Friends going to London. It's funny because whenever I travel and go to different places, their downtowns always look pretty much the same to me. Like sure, the San Francisco houses and architecture, it's one of a kind. But tall skyscrapers in downtown, whether you're in Vancouver, Toronto, New York City, they all pretty much look the same. But even so, downtown anywhere is always my favorite place to be. It was so fun to go on a guided tour this way. I recommend it if you're solo traveling and don't want to use up all of your money on Ubering places or you just want to see a bunch of places in a short time and just don't have time to like walk everywhere. I also wasn't planning on actually even using this guided tour bus. It sort of kind of just happened as soon as I drove into Fisherman's Wharf. The bus was leaving in 10 minutes and urgency will do that to me so I had no choice but to go. It's nice to be spontaneous like this and just see where the day takes you, especially since I never really have any burning things I want to see as an itinerary. My traveling always looks like eating yummy food, splurging on coffee, and walking around downtown pretending I'm in a movie. I like that slow-paced exploring and adventuring rhythm. I went in and out and I got like ketchup all over my bag and my um, jacket. I'm not sure how, like as soon as I sat down, basically I was waiting for the line for like a good 40 minutes. And then as soon as I sat down, I was like exhausted. I was like, finally I'm gonna eat my burger for the first time because I'm trying in and out. And there was just like ketchup everywhere. I have no idea how that happened. And I was like super annoyed. Um, but yeah, I tried in and out for the first time. There was like a lot of firsts that I tried today. I went to, on Uber for the first time by myself. Um, I tried in and out for the first time by myself and I went on a tour bus for the first time. Um, anyways, in and out the burger was pretty good. Um, I wasn't a fan of the fries, but I would have it again. I didn't know much before visiting here, but apparently it's basically it was like the most highest security prison and I think it got shut down like in the late 80s or something because um, it just like it was too expensive to keep going but people still were able to get out. There were still prisoners who were free. I just finished my food. Um, I got like an iced latte to make it uh, go in the back because it's just like super windy. I still just remember that I need to get like groceries and things like that, but it's a nice touristy area, super crowded, and you have to come here ready to like eat and shop. There are like ferry tours over here as well, rides all around the views of the island, um, as well as the Golden Gate Bridge, so yeah, I think it's a great way 
getting to sort of see the city in the areas where I mean I normally wouldn't be able to like drive around. I don't I mean I don't have a car here in San Francisco so it's a great um opportunity for like and I'm really glad I did. And that was pretty much a quick glance at my time in San Francisco. Something I realized is that a workation basically sucks because it's impossible to enjoy exploring while working. Especially this month for me, it was crazy busy at work. I was working 10 to 12 hours most days, feeling like I was going insane, and then who has energy to really be a tourist after that? And that's the truth. Most of my time was spent in coffee shops, working, or in meetings, but it was still pretty cool to be a digital nomad and have brunch at a new place, then moving on to another coffee shop. You can always have a little touristy staycation wherever you're at. All in all, I think facing my fear of skiing is the thing I'm most proud of because time really stood still for me those couple hours when I was learning. And I guess that really is the secret to life. If you want to slow down time, go learn something new. Have the courage to suck at something new. And by the way, I'm also preaching over to myself here because we all need a constant reminder. Hope you enjoyed this chaotic over the place vlog. I drove to Fresno after this and filmed the drive with me where I rant about life and I'm dramatic as always so if you're interested in that check out the vlog.